Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with a cool video. We have this, <laughs> lots of printed materials here. We also have this 3D printer. So this is kind of a quick walkthrough on how can I print something on my 3D printer. We'll get into the basics of exactly breaking down what's going on, but you just want to get something going. This is how you would actually use it. So uh, we're going to go through getting a file, putting it on the drive that we need, a little micro SD card, and then we'll get into the machine prep, what we need to do to level the bed and things like that, and get ready to print. First up is we actually have to come find something to print. Now, there's lots of websites on the internet that cover all of that fun stuff. In this case, we're going to go to Utilimaker Thingiverse. And in this case, I'm going to look for the gear. And that's just a fun one. Uh, there's one I like here, and it prints fairly quick too. It's this one right here. In fact, I don't know what the star means. Probably means I like it. Uh, but if you find something you like, and it could be any of these gears or anything on the internet, there's lots of things to print. I'll just click on it. And on this website, which is handy, you can read the comments and you can read how many people have made it. So there's 992 makes and remixes and all that fun stuff. So you can come through and read the comments. In this case, I think there's actually uh, one that we want to read about that says that they, yeah, for our particular uh, model, it has a little bit more clearance in it and it works better with the 3D, uh, with the Ender uh, 3 Pro. So we're going to use this one instead. So what you'd actually come up here is, is hit the download all files button. And there pops up this little screen that says, you know, thanks for helping us out. You know, please disable an ad blocker. I think this is Firefox just doing what it does. So anyway, you have to wait the 30 seconds. Uh, I think on other computers, I actually see an ad here. So I'm guessing that's what it's running in there. Uh, but after the the timer, which is usually 30 seconds, it'll go ahead and download to your computer a zip file, which will contain all the little bits and pieces you'll need. So here's my little gear bearing file. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this and that's gonna open up an unzipper and it's actually gonna put the directory under it for me. And in this folder, and I'm using a Mac, but be the same on a PC. You have images of your actual file. So if you click on that, you can kind of see a, that's what it's gonna look like. But here are the actual files and the only one that we have and the only one we're interested in is the STL file. So now that we have this STL file, we can move on to the next step and that's slicing it for our machine. Slicing it's fairly easy. We're actually going to use the software that came with our, uh, this is the Creole T slicer and it's actually already open. It's got something in it. So I'm going to go up here to file and go new project because we don't want to use an old project. And it says, do you want to get rid of this? I say, yes. So now it's blank. And what this slicer program does is it actually programs that STL file to actually work with our machine. So we take this STL and drop it here. And boom, there is our little gear file that you see right there. And that's exactly what we want printed. Now there's some options here you'll have to play with. Like here's our actual printer. And uh, this is the quick guide, 10% infill. So anything that's like in the walls and things is only 10%. This is actually, uh, do we put support on there? Nope. And do I want to put an extra plastic on the first layer so that it sticks to the bed? Also no. You can get very complicated when you hit the edit button. Lots of choices. You can move and change the speed of the printer and it, types of adhesion and cooling. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and move this down to none. It doesn't need adhesion on this particular type of model, but some do. So it's one of those things where, and the file on the website will actually very often in the description kind of indicate what works best with this. In this case, this one doesn't, but several of them do. Like you want to have raft or you want to do something cool like that or, or what have you. So once you figure out all your, your selections, let's X that out and you press the slice button. And what it's going to do, it's now actually going to process, it's essentially cutting the machine out. In fact, I'll be able to click preview and I'll be able to show you. Um, if we click preview, you can see this. And if I slide the bar, there are 75 layers. You can actually see how it plans to print this 3D print starting at layer one and going all the way up to layer 75. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually going to, I previewed it. Now I'm going to go ahead and set save to file. It says it's going to take two hours and 19 minutes to print. So if I save to file, in this case, I'm just going to drop this. I'm going to call it something else. I'm going to call it gear YouTube. 
So that's what we're here for. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it to the desktop for reasons we'll see later. Click save. And it's done. So we can actually exit our slicer now. And now on my desktop, I should have wherever it ran to, here it is, gear YouTube file dot G code. And G code is what my printer speaks. So now that if I put this onto my printer, it will tell me exact, or it'll tell the printer exactly what to do. But how do you do that? Well, long story short, our printer uses these little SD, these little SD cards. And so in this case, you can use a USB converter, which you, takes USB into a little micro reader there. Or if you're a nerd like I am, uh, I'm just gonna open up Finder here and click on uh, my network and hop over to my laptop. And my laptop's downstairs, it also has a reader. And I'm just gonna bust into the desktop and do, 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 do. So this is the desktop of the computer downstairs. It's a Windows PC. I'm just gonna drop it on there and boom, away it goes. So let's go downstairs now and uh, get this loaded on the printer. With my memory card plugged into my laptop here, I really just have to go and take my gear YouTube file, which it looks like I typoed the YouTube anyway, and I just need to drag it down over here to this USB drive and let it go and it'll transfer over, and they're actually quite small in size, so it doesn't actually take that much to do it. Now, there'll be two other files on this USB drive, or at least actually a couple, because I just kind of stack them in here every now and then. There are two that are important and you need to know. Google the CHEP, and that's a YouTube channel. He has a lot of informative videos. Long story short, there's two files that we always put on every memory card that hits this printer, and they're the bed level code and the bed level print code. And I'll show you exactly why you need those two here in just a second. And then we have our, we did an easy gear one that we can go ahead and get rid of. So I'm just going to delete that one. And uh, yes, that's fine. And then also we have, uh, I printed this uh, uh, Pontiac Firebird, which we'll talk about later, maybe. Uh, so that, that file was on here. That, that print was done. So we'll get rid of it since uh, it's actually saved up on the Mac as well. So now we just have our three files on our memory card, the two that we'll need, and then our uh, gear for YouTube. So now we can go ahead and eject this drive and let's get our machine ready to print. Now that our printer's at home, we'll come down to temperature and we'll turn the bed temperature up to 50. And that's where most prints run. And that's is just to make sure that we don't do any sort of if it gets warm, it might warp a little bit, and we want to take that into account because that's the temperature it operates at all the time. So let's turn the bed up to uh, 50 degrees, and so you can see it's warming up right here. Then I'm going to come down here, and we're going to run the bed level program. Go ahead and print that. The bed's still heating because I told it to. And so now what we have is our printer is going to start off in the corner here once I acknowledge that we're ready to go. So we're getting there, we're close enough on the bed temperature that I'm gonna go ahead and press enter and resume print. And now it sits here. Now I'm gonna take a, a fairly typical piece of paper here and slide it underneath the nozzle. And I'm looking for some drag. I wanna be able to slide it in there. I don't wanna hit the nozzle and not be able to get, un get under it. I wanna be able to feel some drag. So in this case, it's really loose. So I'm going to righty tighty lefty loosey it in and. There we go. I can slide under it, but it's got some fairly good drag. So that one's good for now. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit the enter button, which is just down, and it's gonna to move to its next set point. In this case, it's in the back. Same test again. It's loose, but we can get a little tighter. There we go. Practice will make perfect when you feel that out, and you can feel the heat of the bed coming out. Let's hit enter and move on to the next point. This one is actually loose, so let's, oh, but not that loose. And I just did a mistake there, so let's see if you caught that. This bar that goes across the top here, you don't wanna to touch it, right? Because you're putting weight on it will actually mess up where your nozzle is supposed to be. So right now it's it's pretty good, but we'll see when we come back, back around if it, it moves again. So 
it'll lift itself up, put itself back down. Don't touch the bar. And uh, see, this one's okay. The true test will be if we hit it one more time, it'll move to the middle. Now in theory, you can move all four wheels to get alignment here, but I just use it as a gauge. Like we're probably still a little loose because this is still a little loose there. It's, it's a little tight. Hit enter again, we're gonna go back to the corner. And we are two, oh, nope, we're okay. It's a little tight, but I think we'll be fine. We can get it under there, and it doesn't. We're gonna come over to the spot where I actually touched the bar, which is a mistake. We'll see where we fit now. We've come up and down a couple times, and it is loose. So I'm gonna come in on this side, and we're gonna tighten it up a little bit. Oh, there we go. So there's the resistance we're looking for with that come down here and it does it twice because when you move one it actually slightly moves the others as well so by doing it twice you at least get that oh yeah that's good right there and then our final measurement is back where we started just a little bit would be fine that's better so now they all have about the same resistance across the bed there but now let's prove it so we've run our program. You could say pause, print, or stop, print. I guess it wants me to resume print. And now we're gonna stop print and we're done. Now we're gonna use the next program, which is called bed level print. Now we're starting to get serious here. So you hit print. And what it's going to do is actually run a print program and it's actually going to print squares onto our bed. And to do that, of course, we need to do two things. We need to, the temperature is automatically programmed to go up to 50 on the bed, and it says bed heating right now. As soon as it gets up to 50, in which case it is, it's gonna switch over to extruder heating, and now it's gonna heat this extruder head up to uh, 205 degrees. And this usually takes a minute or two, at this point, I would normally be sanding on another product or cutting off uh, some of the extra plastic on things. But in this case, we'll just sit here and wait and I'll fast forward you to the end. Once it hits the temperature, it actually goes over a little bit and actually cools down to the temperature at once. In which case, we're gonna hear a scary beep because if you're doing something else, it gets you. And it's actually gonna print a strip and that's in a a uh, ender thing, and we've got pink ink in it today. And then it's gonna print a square. What we're gonna be doing here is you're gonna watch me follow with my finger. And what we're looking for is a good print, and what I mean by that is we're looking for this to not move and for it to actually be there. And you can look at the consistency of the line, but mostly what we're looking for is that it doesn't move when we it goes across it. And in this case, it's looking pretty good. Now one thing to note is that it's currently at a height, the Z measurement, or Z measurement, is at 0.28. So that's good to know. But it looks like our coverage is good. It's not making splatters. It's not too low where it's dragging it along. It's not too high where it's not adhering. It's adhering quite nicely, actually. So this is some fairly nice filament. And our bed, and as you can tell by all the corners, is fairly level. Now it might get a little tweaked as it gets closer to the center. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But overall, I think we are ready to do a print. So let's go ahead and stop this print, as I'm pretty sure we are good. So I'm gonna hit here, I hit the enter key, I come down to stop print, I say stop print, it stops for me. Print aborted, so the head gets out of the way and I take my included scraper and just lightly lift these off. They don't fight me too bad. Just rip those right off the bed. And we are good to go. I'm gonna take this strip off the side here. I moved out a screenshot, sorry about that. We got this strip that also gets laid down the side. Some of the times, on some of the prints, depending on how big they are, you've gotta, as soon as it lays this strip down, you gotta take it off. Because it will, uh... now if you have a hard time and you hate reaching through the machine, you can always just come down here, press the enter key, come down to motion, move axis, and Y is our back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Y, move 10, and I'm actually gonna have it, it's about 200 is the setting, we'll have it come out 190. And that actually brings the bed right out for me. 
And then I can just, it's right in front of me where I can come and strip all this stuff off here. So our bed is fairly clear. If you needed to, you could use some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and wipe this down if it were dusty or dirty or anything like that. But in this case, I think we are okay. So now we're ready to print our gear set. So we'll come back over here to our screen. Let's roll up, up and press enter all the way till we get back to our main screen. Okay, one more info screen. Boom, here we are. Enter, come down to print for media. Let's go to our incorrectly spelled <laughs> file. Let's say print. So now we have the same dance we we're going to do before where we wait for the bed to heat up. In this case, we were at 45 degrees, so it's not far, but you'll notice our extruder head has really gone down. It cools down fairly quickly when it's not being heated, so uh, if you have to stop and restart, it often takes a couple minutes for it to get down and come back again. So let's go ahead and time lapse through this and catch it on the start. All right, so we've hit temp, it's gonna cool down. We're gonna watch the first layer, and I usually always sit down here, depending on how, how large the print is. Like this, this van piece actually printed upside down. It was fairly large, so I mostly started to watch it start. No annoying beep, that's cool. Um, it's gonna home out the head, which means it brings the bed back, it comes down and over. So it zeroes out its location, so it knows exactly where it is. And these stepper motors know how far they travel. And it's gonna lay its strip. That's put in by our cutting software. And at point two, it is not super duper. So we'll see how this goes. It's pretty good on the return trip. But there we go. Now you can see it is deforming a little bit there, but wait and see. Sometimes it's not super great on the first coat. It's a much better on the second one. So if this doesn't get too hairy, if you can get in there and pull that out, that also helps. We might be okay. This is the first time we've used this particular PLA plastic, so it might work great or it might not. We do have the ones we constantly use, which are always great, but we're giving this one a spin. Seems like it's doing its thing. So what I'm going to do now is throw you on a time lapse and you enjoy the build and we'll come back when we're done. All right, now that's done, let's go ahead and dig it out of here. So let's press the enter button, bring the motion down to move axis and move to Y and by 10 millimeters. And let's just go ahead and give it the old 200, 190, whatever. Thing is, is if we don't lift this magnetic bed off it, we're actually not gonna lose any adjustments in regards to our height of our deck here. So it comes with a spatula or a scraper, if you will. And if I can just sneak in here, I should be able to maybe get this thing lifted off without adjusting the bed too bad. They're not wiggly yet because they're all attached to the... There we go. That lifted up. Boom. There's our... So now, here we go. And uh, it has loose tolerances, so let's see how we go. Are we free? Looks like we're a little crispy. Oh, oh, there we go, look at that. So now we have another fidget toy. This one happens to be a gear fidget spinner. The more it runs, the better it'll be. Look at that, isn't that pretty cool? So there, you just printed an easy, Download it off the internet, threw it through your slicer software, put it into your machine, printed it, here you go. Now there are some other details that we'll get into later in regards to loading the machine and stuff like that, but actually it's not hard to make 3D prints and then you can just keep going and going and going. We hardly used any uh, PLA material. This is lightweight. We didn't waste anything. There's no extra here. This is 100% in the print. So. 
Fantastic. If you have any questions, there's lots. Feel free to ask. We're getting good at it ourselves, but there's always more to learn. Part of why we got a 3D printer was to learn these things. If you have any comments, leave those and subscribe to our channel, Red Bart Homestead, for more cool, interesting videos like this. I love these gear fidget spinners, especially when you print them and they just work like that. Oh, how winning is that? You guys have a good day.